In this video, you will learn some techniques on how to separate the workflow and job configuration from the automation logic. These techniques apply not only to actions and action packs, but you can also use them in workflows that do not contain actions. Let me first describe a problem based on an example. This workflow, from a previous video, starts an AWS instance. It executes a command on the remote machine, and then, it retrieves a file. Finally, the workflow stops the instance. All these steps need input parameters to perform the task. For the workflow, these input parameters are configuration values. For example, the agent where the actions should be performed. The login object. The AWS instance ID. The access key. The path to the key file. And so on. All these values could change over time. Also, you may need different values for different systems, that is, for your development system, for your test system, or for the production system. If you keep these values in the workflow task properties, you must modify these properties on each system. If a value changes, you must modify the workflow, and change all occurrences of the corresponding value. To avoid this, you keep the configuration values separate from the workflow. You store the configuration values and variables. Then, to read the values, you reference the variables and workflows. To store configuration values, you can use var objects, for example, static var objects. Static var objects have one key column and five valued columns, which is sufficient for many use cases. For more complex configuration setups, if you need more than six columns, you can use an XML var object. XML var objects store your configuration values in structured XML. There are two methods to reference var objects in workflows and jobs. One, you can use the atomic scripting language and reference them with the get underscore var function. 2. In prompt sets or in object property fields, you can reference them by using curly brackets. Both methods need the same arguments. For static vars, you need the object name, the key, and the value column index, 1 to 5. And for XML vars, you need the object name, the key, and the XPath expression to query the XML value. The next four examples illustrate the following situations. In which cases you should reference your configuration var as using the scripting language. In which ones you should reference them in prompt sets. And when in object property fields. Example 1. This is the workflow that I have shown you earlier. It executes 5 actions from various action packs. Each action needs input parameters. The workflow itself does not use a prompt set because I do not want users to modify any parameter values when they perform a manual execution. In this case, I reference the configuration var object in the task property fields. Example 2. This is a similar workflow. It uses the same actions as the previous example, but this time, the workflow has a prompt set. In this prompt set, the workflow uses many of the parameters of the actions, but not all of them. The workflow prompt set uses the var object to retrieve the default values for the prompt set values. In this example, it is important that the workflow passes the values from its prompt set to the actions, where applicable. In the first task, the AWS instance is started. The instance ID is included in the workflow prompt set, so this value must be passed on from the workflow to the action. 
it would be wrong to reference the configuration var here. The action would always take the instance ID from the configuration var, ignoring the user input in the workflow. The AWS URL and region are not part of the workflow prompt set, so these are taken directly from the configuration var. If you have nested workflows with prompt sets on multiple levels, then make sure to apply this technique across all levels. Example 3 this job should use the login object, as specified in the configuration vara. The job does not have a prompt set, so I can reference the configuration directly in the login drop down list. Example 4. This job has no prompt set. It executes a Perl script to create a report. The report file should have the following name. A prefix, as defined in the configuration. Then, the current date with the following format, yyyy, mm, dd. And finally, the suffix .dxt. The job retrieves the configuration value that is, the report file prefix, using the get underscore var script function, because the value is used directly inside the job's JCL, and the job does not have a prompt set. Let me summarize the takeaways. Separate your configuration from your process logic, to make your workflows easier to transport across systems, for deployments, and updates. The two VARA types, static and XML, are well suited to store your workflow configuration. You can reference the configuration VARA in different ways, using the atomic scripting language, or using curly brackets. Your use case determines how you should reference the configuration in your workflows. This video shows four use cases to give you some guidance. Be especially careful when you use prompt sets on multiple workflow levels. Make sure that the parent workflow passes its values onto its children, where applicable. Thanks for watching.